<laughs> oh. You're a real hero. Now what brings you here? Didn't take long long for him to get wasted, did it? I killed the dragons. It's safe to return to work. What if there's more dragons later? Or something worse like uh bigger dragons? I go back to the missus without this job. She'll rip me apart, sure as any dragon. What can we do? That bastard Hubert is the only one willing to hire us. Would you go back for twice your previous salary? Wow. Well, I... I trust this teas, Chance, and take it. We can drown our sorrows every night. And not with his dark town swill, either. Back to work, boys. I'm happy to take more of Hubert's coin. Well, I'm not sure that they're really going to spend the extra money wisely, but at least it was certainly effective in getting them back to work to offer them a raise. Although, for some reason, Isabella does not like when you do that. I'm not quite sure why. But anyway. Okay, so. Last order of business before we close stuff out for Act 1, and that is what's called the Black Emporium. So we're going to go there now. This is a small piece of DLC, and even though it's listed as a quest, it really isn't. It's just that you need to go there and check it out. And this just has uh, some little bonus odds and ends, some of which I find useful, some I don't. <laughs> Yeah, and he pretty much always talks that slow. So this is uh, Zenon the Antiquarian. I am the great and magnificent Zenon the Antiquarian. As I said. And yes, it, he, he looks like a withered old corpse, so there's definitely some magic involved here. We have a random urchin child. Don't manhandle the urchin. <laughs> He's not for sale. Find your own! <laughs> I'm assuming that he probably serves uh, Xenon by going and getting stuff in other areas of the city, since it doesn't look like Xenon is particularly mobile. We have a Vessel of Tears. Although, this wax-stoppered vessel is clearly labeled Tears Shed During the Burning of Treviso, many questions remain, not the least of which is, which burning of Treviso? When the Crunari conquered it in uh, the year 635 of the Steel... 6... Um, blech, I always read these dates wrong... I think that's 35th, the 35th day of the 6th year of the Steel Age. When it was burned by the liberating armies of the White and Black Divines during the Second Exalted March of 752 Storm, or when it was accidentally burned to the ground in 862 Blessed, after a dock hand knocked over a lantern in a warehouse full of lamp oil. <laughs> Ouch. Even assuming the correct event could be determined, the question of whose tears has been collected remains. Presumably not any of the numerous fire victims. Surviving relatives, perhaps? Nobles with summer houses on the Antivan coast? It should be noted that nowhere on the label does it say that these tears were shed in relation to the event, so they could have been the tears of a woman in Montismart, weeping because she was not asked to dance at the last costume ball unaware that at the very moment one of the greatest port cities of Thedas was aflame. From the letters of Brother Genetivi to Sister Patrine Chantry Scholar. I think Genetivi is getting a little bit too deep into his detail-oriented in his research here. <laughs> Some 
Dame fellow asked, why make a shop so hard to find? <laughs> Me, really? He just has no concept. <laughs> Here we have the Mirror of Transformation. And what's nice is that this gives you the ability to uh, change your appearance. And on the one hand, this may be because, you know, at the very beginning of the game, especially on your first run, you didn't, you know, spend a lot of time, and maybe you do want to customize your character a bit more. But a more useful aspect is since this game takes place during a number of years, it gives you the opportunity to alter your character's appearance in later acts um, to show the effects of time. And that's actually what I'll be using it for during this Let's Play. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> That's not creepy at all, Mr. Xenon. Here we have some specialty items that are only available at the Black Emporium. Um, some of which you might find useful, some not. It depends on the time at which you've stopped by to look at them. Um, we also have a, a whole bunch of maker's size. And what this uh, lets you do is permanently reallocate all of your... Um, attribute points. In other words, completely remake your character uh, in, in a way, if you want. There's a uh, desk here with... lets you uh, look at all kinds of different potions. So that's kind of like the uber uh poison and, and potion shop there for you. You have the box of screaming. You actually do... I was kind of talking over it, but I apologize. When you first walk near the box of screaming, you'll hear a very faint scream uh, in the background. I received the box from a man I met, in, I met in the Silent Plains. He spoke little and would not reveal his name. For reasons I shall not detail here, I had been kidnapped and left for dead in that gray, wind-blasted wasteland. After days of walking, I was parched and close to death. I was about to dash my head on a rock to speed my passing when the man arrived. He possessed a water skin containing ample water for a person traveling from our location to the Imperial Highway. From there, he said, I could find my way to Solas or per Perivantium. He offered to give me the water skin if I agreed to take three things from him a glowing crystal shard, a bronze sphere, and an iron-bound box with no hinges. I asked the man if he wished... Oops, scroll too far. If he wished to have these items delivered. He said that he merely wanted me to have them. It was an odd request, but I was too weak and too desperate to think much of it. And so I agreed. The man put the items into a leather sack, which he handed to me along with the water. What about you? I asked. He said nothing, only pointed in the direction from which I had come. There is nothing that way, I said. He merely smiled at me. I found the Imperial Highway about a day later, and a caravan driver agreed to take me to, per to Paravantium in exchange for, that, for the large glowing shard. In Paravantium, I bartered the bronze sphere for new clothes and a room at the inn. That night I examined the iron-bound box and found no way to open it. I held it to my ear and thought I heard a, low, a slow, measured breathing coming from within. My mind was afire uh, with curiosity, and I obtained from the innkeeper a large hammer, thinking to smash the thing open. The moment the hammer touched the box, it shrieked. The shrill sound pierced the depths of my soul. I gave the box to the innkeeper in the morning and felt better for having rid myself of it. A page torn from a mysterious journal on display at the Black Emporium. Well, it looks like this man is a collector of bizarre items, to say the least. There's a photograph there. I think that actually may be King Kalen, Or could it be his father? Maybe. I'm not sure. That's just my guess. I'm tired of those plebeian items. Take what you like. No charge. 
So get some free items Lose there. Charge, you hear me? We have the picked apples of Alothan. I expressed my incredulity to credulity to the shop's assistant, who coldly noted that he did not like my implication. He insisted that every article in the Black Emporium was genuine. No fakes, imitations, or cheap knockoffs. I must have, must have appeared unconvinced, for the assistant narrowed his eyes at me and disappeared into the bowels of the shop, returning several minutes later. He removed the jar of pickled apples... Oh, I'm sorry. It's not picked apples, it's pickled apples. I'm sorry. ...from its display case and proceeded to carefully, reverentially, remove the wax seal from the lid of the jar. I watched with fascination as the jar was opened, and a single rosy apple pulled from it. It looked as if it had been picked just that day, at the peak of ripeness. With a paring knife, the assistant cut the tiniest sliver of flesh from the apple and presented it to me. The flavor of that one small sliver was astonishing. It was as close to a, a perfect apple as ever there was. I was experiencing the essence of every apple ever eaten, and that ever, and that ever will be eaten. When it was over, the sense of loss that filled me was sharp enough to move me to tears. The rest of the apple was returned to the jar, which was then resealed. I paid five sovereigns for that single taste, and I believe I got the better part of the bargain. More letters from Jenna TV. That must be one heck of an apple. Too bad we can't get any. And as much as the child, I think, is used to run errands, I think this might be the guy who guards the place. That Gollum's name is Thaddeus Gigantus Crumbum the Third. <laughs> He's my favorite. Sometimes when he talks, he almost sounds like a weird Tim Curry impersonator. Let me know what you'd like to purchase. Looking this dapper costs a lot of gold. I can imagine. So, the, that's pretty much it to this place, um, and you can always come back to do some more business, just like any other uh, merchant, if you desire. But that's pretty much the extent of the Black Emporium. So, I'm going to head to High Town for just a moment here. Alright, sorry about that little edit there, folks, but I just remembered that I had forgotten one quest because... Frankly, it wasn't in the list. I had not uh, actually ob obtained the quest yet. And it's from this person here. So we're going to go through this quest really quick before we continue to uh, get to the end of Act 1. This is from a quest from Magistrate Venard. You there, Ferelden. I wish to speak with you. I've heard you have dealings with certain elements in the city. You can get things done on the sly, as they say. That's a fancy way to put it. I am a magistrate in this city, and as such, I wish to hire you for a small, albeit important job. A man I sentenced to a life in prison has escaped custody. He's been tracked to an abandoned ruin outside the city. I'd like you to retrieve the fugitive and hand him over to the guard. Why is there such a clamor to catch this man? What has he done? He's escaped. That's reason enough to catch him. Hmm. We're both intelligent people. There's something in the ruins, isn't there? There is something, yes. There are creatures in the ruins. The guards I sent are ill-equipped to deal with such beasts. Do you know what manner of beasts they are? I don't know what they look like. I've never seen one myself. The guards say these things have already torn through a full company of men. It would be easier to seal up the entrance and let the beasts take care of him. I believe in justice, Fereldon, not unbridled slaughter. I will not let prisoners be eaten just because I don't want to get my hands dirty. But if you don't want to get your hands dirty, I mean, that's why you're sending us in, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure if you send in enough men this time, they'd do fine. No. The more guards who know, the easier it is for this to get out. Those men gossip like old fishwives. I'll take the job. 
Bring the fugitive in alive, quickly and quietly. Not only will you be well paid, you'll have the gratitude of a city magistrate. Useful for a refugee, wouldn't you agree? All right, so here's the quest, Magister's Orders. It takes place just outside the city. So let's go. I've been sent for the man you've cornered here in the ruins. Ah, so you're the reinforcements the Magistrate promised. The man you're looking for, he's holed up in the ruins. Though I doubt he's still in one piece. That bastard's to be brought in alive after all he's done? Just because it isn't you and your pretty little Shemlin children he's after. Look at these guards. I doubt either of them has to worry about having pretty children. That's not what I meant. The man you're after, he targets elves. He dragged my daughter into those ruins and killed her. I want him dead. My girl, Leah, uh, she wasn't his first victim. Over the years, he's taken dozens of our children, and not once has he paid for his crimes. Would you mind telling me who you are? Uh, my name is Elrin. I'm a merchant in the city. Please, no one else cares that our children are being slaughtered like beasts. There must be some humans who would take offense to these disappearances. We're nothing to them. Even if this murderer does finally go before the courts, the Magistrate won't take our word over his. Why only elves? Why not human children as well? We're easy prey. No one thinks twice when an elven child disappears. A man who murders children won't survive long in the courts of Kirkwall. No! Don't you understand? If you take him in, he'll be free again by nightfall! For all my damn coin, I'm still only an elf to these Shemlin. There'll be no justice for my girl in the courts of Kirkwall. What do you say about all this? They won't go in after him. They're stalling, trying to give the murdering bastard a chance to get away. Oi now, elf. Like we said before, you're bleeding mad if you think we'll be going against the Magistrate's orders. Hmm. Well, at the moment, I don't think we have enough information here to really decide on this person's... Whether, whether this person should be in the courts or executed outright. The Magistrates of Kirkwall will pass judgment. Not you or me. No human Magistrate is going to side with an elf. Well, we'll see, won't we? Now, let's... I think up here may be something... Item... Something here. Oh, no, just junk. I thought maybe uh, there was a component. Again, this is one of those uh, here and then gone areas, so I always like to look around. Let's head in. Oh, this looks friendly. <laughs> ah, spiders. Dwarven leather boots in that chest. We'll have to see if those are something that we want to wear. Oh, I should not be in the midst of all that. I should be on the outside, like this. Alright. Ah, yes, there was something in here that we needed for the Herbalist mission. So again, that's just less trouble for me later on when I do the rest off-camera.
I think we need to go this way. Usually you have to take the, the windy way through these areas because the straightforward way tends to have locked doors. In, and let's bring in Loco here. He can have some fun. Whoa, <laughs> Isabella got knocked over there. Something fierce. Oh, that's why. Okay, there's a Darkspawn magician over there. Those are not fun people. Got him. That's everyone. Do some cleanup. There's that chest I was looking for. Eh, nothing particularly of interest there. This is another reused map, so we'll be seeing it again. Who are you? Please, can you get me out of here? I just want to go home. Leah? Your father told us you were dead. My father? Is he safe? Kelder said that he'd hurt my family if I didn't come with him. Who is Kelder? The man who took me. I don't see any injuries. Are you all right? He hit me, told me I was nothing. I begged him to stop hurting me. I didn't think he would, but out of nowhere, he pushed me away and just started crying. Don't you see? He didn't mean to hurt me. He told me. There are demons. They make him do these horrible things. What kind of demons? What did they look like? I... Don't know what they look like. I didn't actually see any of them. But Kelder told me to run, to get away so they couldn't make him hurt me anymore. Please don't kill him. It's not his fault. She is a child and does not understand. Her pity is admirable, but misplaced. I'm taking Kelder back to Kirkwall. They'll figure out what to do with him there. Maybe they can help him. Run to the entrance. You'll find your father there. Hmm. So there's a chance that demons are involved here. Trap! Ah. Thank you, Hawk. Go get him, Loco. Oh, there's a lot of them here. Clean him out. <laughs> Looks like he's in here. Yep. I knew my father would eventually send someone. I was hoping the beasts down here would get to me first. You wanted those creatures to kill you. Why? It's what I deserve. I should be torn apart, forgotten down here, not protected by my father. The Magistrate sent me. I've never even met your father. He didn't tell you, did he? The Magistrate is my father. He's tried so hard to keep me and what I've done hidden away. Not hard enough, so it seems. The Magistrate is supposed to protect the people of the city, and that includes the Elves. Father is a good man. He tried to help, to stop me, but he can't. No one can. That Elf girl, she had no right to be so beautiful, so perfect. The demon said she needed to be taught a lesson, like all the others. The Circle was supposed to help me, but they lied. They said there were no demons, that I was mad. This isn't my fault. 
Leah said you told her to run. Why? I was crying, and she asked me if I was all right. After everything the demons made me do to her, she was concerned about me. How could I let them destroy something so good, so pure? Let me get this straight. You torture and murder elven children for being too beautiful. I... I didn't want to hurt them. They forced me. The demons don't like it when they cry. If the Circle suspected a demon at work, they wouldn't risk setting you loose in the city. No. They lied. Coward. Doesn't even have the balls to own up to his own depravity. I can't stop. I've tried so many times. Please, you have to kill me. There's no other way. He sees the truth of it. Allow me to grant his wish, if you will not. So here we have a pretty dire situation, because if it's true that we send him back to the Magistrate, and the Magistrate's just going to try to cover this whole thing up, then he's really not going to be involved in any kind of justice here. So in this particular case, it looks like we'll have to take matters into our own hands. But in this case, it looks like Fenris is willing to do the deed himself. Any last words before he kills you, Kelda? Tell my father. I'm sorry. And uh, it's actually kind of, well, I wouldn't say it's super surprising, but it's interesting that this is the only decision I know of in the game where it doesn't matter who you take into your party. Um, if you spare his life and let him go back to the magistrates, everyone pretty much either doesn't have any opinion or disapproves. Whereas if you decide to kill him, more or less everyone will either approve or, again, not have an opinion. And I believe even Aveline approves if you have him executed. So, someone who's very, very concerned with following the, you know, the code of justice still feels that this is a justified, you know, execution here. If you choose to spare his life, actually, he will not go quietly. He will try to run back into the, um, uh back into the uh, into another part of the dungeon still trying to get the demons to attack and kill him um, and it takes a while for you to actually bring him in but we chose to execute him so let's see what happens uh, as a consequence you saved her my little girl, I didn't dare hope... Did you find that monster? Is he dead? He won't harm Leah or anyone else, ever again. I didn't believe an elf could ever get justice in Kirkwall. I speak for all of us when I say that we are in your debt, Sora. I feel just as bad for those knife ears as the next man. But ignoring the Magistrate's direct orders, that's madness. Alright. And I think... Uh, yeah. You see, it's still on our list. Um, we have to go back to the Magistrate now and face the music, so to speak. see what the man's father has to say. So this relic you mentioned losing... You have pretty eyes. I have pretty eyes. You elves have such pretty eyes. Even the men. It makes me want to pluck them out and wear them as a necklace. I wouldn't suggest trying. Oh, I would never try. 
Not without reason, of course. Forget I said anything. <laughs> Now, in this particular playthrough, um, you guys chose uh, that Hawk should romance Fenris, so this is go it's not going to happen in this playthrough. But if you don't romance either Fenris or Isabella, their uh, dialogue as time goes on will start to suggest that maybe they're having uh, a little fling between the two of them. It's kind of cute. You dare show your face to me. He left even before he could finish saying what he was going to say. So that's the Magistrate's Orders. It's a... As, as dark and gritty as Dragon Age tends to get, this is a particularly dark story because, of course, <clears throat> at the beginning, you're given the impression that maybe some kind of evil demon is possessing this uh, elven child murderer. But in the end, it turns out that there are no demons. It's just his own twisted mind that's making him do this. That has an interesting effect. It kind of brings it a little bit close to reality, because, of course, there are examples of people who have acted like that, you know, in our real world. So, it, the whole thing tends to end up feeling, you know, uncomfortable by the time you're done with the mission, which doesn't bother me. Um, what does bother me, however, is that unlike other missions like the Bone Pit or... Um, or the, uh, the, the serial killer that's on the loose and hunting young women. This one has no follow-up to it. That is pretty much the end. So not only if you execute him, there's no consequence for it. In other words, the magistrate is not going to come back and try to get revenge or anything like that. Um, there's just no follow-up at all. It doesn't matter if you let him live or you execute him. So it kind of just you know, pitters out at the end of the uh, quest, which stands out because with so many other quests, there is follow-up that happens in later acts, and it's kind of nice because you get a, a nice flow of story that changes based on, uh, at least somewhat based on your decisions. So it's kind of a shame that they just kind of did this one little quest here that was very dark and uh, somewhat provoking, and then just let it, you know, go away and, and never touched it again. Um, a bit of a shame, is just my opinion. But anyway, that is our last quest, so I will now cut back to the uh, final decision we need to make for Act 1 in the Deep Roads Expedition. And it looks like I spoke too soon. <laughs> I keep finding that there's these little exclamation points of quests I forgot to ask for earlier. Although this is even a smaller one than the Magistrate one, so we can do this really quick as well. Lord Haramont, what do we do with the human? Stand down. She's not our foe. What was that about? Assassins. The boat to Ravain is within sight, but the Carta would see me dead before I get there. How would you like to make some coin? I've never seen a dwarven lord. You still haven't. If you're looking at him in daylight, he's not a lord anymore. I'm Renville Haramont, the last of my house. My family was once revered in Orzammar. Now I'm nothing but a surfacer on the run. You must have greatly angered the Carter for them to attack you with so many witnesses around. My family was murdered one by one by King Balin, after my uncle failed to claim the throne. Balin's reach is long, and his vengeance a terrible thing to behold. I'll clear the way for you, Haramont. Dispatch these ruffians and I'll pay you what I can now. And by the ancestors, I will reward you proper when I am safe. What is your name? Hawk. A good name. I will remember it. The Carta has several groups lying in wait for us. Take the battle to them. All right. Well, I look to you. <laughs> so, uh, basically... We'll talk later. Don't you worry. Oh, boy. Isabella is flirting with the 
street walkers here. Um, <clears throat> so this is a quest that appears because, of course, in the uh, original Dragon Age game, uh, Vexus, uh, Warden Vexus, I should say, uh, chose to put Balin on the throne. Actually, it was you guys who voted for that. <laughs> uh, so he did. And that means here that we have the descendant of, or the last descendant of Harrowmont, uh, being hunted. Uh, his family, his ri the rival family of Harrowmont has basically been purged. Um, so, since Hawk doesn't have any particular loyalty to one family or the other, I'm sure she has no qualms about helping uh, this outcast lord out. Um, and I think I made a mistake earlier. I was talking about the Coterie being an Oz Orzammar. I think I meant the Carta. That's the problem with having multiple uh, underworld organizations starting with the letter C. <laughs> so it's the Carta that operates in Orzammar and is made up of mo mostly dwarves. I guess the Coterie is more operation operating here in the Free Marches and is made up of mostly humans. Harrowmont spoke to you, didn't he? Whatever reward he offered, we'll offer you more to kill him. Uh, I already gave my word, so never mind. How about I take care of you instead? Chubert bastard! Ah, uh, it's your funeral. Okay. Any loot from the Karna? A little bit. I think we need to go this way. Andros is greatly with you. Yep. Another group over there. Let's see. I think the Canary is spying on us. That was a random line, Mr. Commoner. I think there's one more group up here. Yeah, they are. Let's get two storms here at once. There we go. It's one of the cool things you can have when both you and Varric are in the same team, and you're an archer. Actually, once we get our final party member, we'll be able to have three archers on the screen at once if we wanted to, which would probably be a bit overkill, but might be fun just to see. He looks like the main bad guy here, the Karda Assassin. Well done, everyone. I think that's it. Yes, that's it. Loot the field here, and then we'll go back to Harrowmont and tell him that we've cleared the way. Now I may sp I may have spoken once again too soon, but I think I think that this is the last one of the side quests. A sneer on your lips. All right, you're good to go, Harrowmont. I wager you've a bright future ahead of you. Take this. More will come, as promised. May the stone look after you. It'll be interesting to see if anything comes of that particular decision uh, in the third game. Who knows? But for now, I will sign off for hopefully the last little extra time here and take us to the uh, final decision that you guys need to make for Act 1.
make our way over to the Merton Guild. Wesley never had children. I mean, sorry if that's too personal. It's all right. I was a soldier and he was a Templar. We knew that our personal lives would have to wait. Distance never mattered. But we ran out of time. It is what it is. Now that he's gone, do you ever wish? That's too personal. Hmm. Okay. Ah, here we go. Here's the merchant's skill. Alright, so I bring us over here just because here's Bartrand. So we actually have the two things that Bartrand's looking for. Um, thanks to Anders, we have a map of the deep roads near the location where the expedition is going to take place. And we should have, if I look, yes, we have 83 sovereigns. So we have more than enough to pay Bartrand to go on the expedition. So, at this point, we reach the next major decision that I'd like for you guys, the audience, to make a call on. When we start this final quest, we will be given a choice to either take Bethany, our sister, with us on the expedition, or leave her behind. No matter which, of the, uh, which decision we make on this, it's going to dramatically affect what's going to happen to Bethany for the rest of the story. So that's why I'm making this your call. So what I'd like you guys to do is vote in the comments below, as you wish, either to take Bethany with us, or leave her behind. It's as simple as that. If you want to give your reasoning, that's fine as well, although you don't have to. You can just uh, comment with your, with your vote. Um, and uh, there will be at least one week worth of voting before I start uh, uh, the next session and act on your decision. It may be a little longer, just because, of course, uh, the rest of the fall semester is ahead at the time of this recording, so it might take me a little bit to, uh, to get to the next recording after this. But you'll at least get a week after this video is post posted um, to vote on it. So I ask if you have an opinion, please express it. So until then, fellow adventurers, we will, uh, when we come back, we're going to go down to the deep roads and see what's down there. Until next time, fellow adventurers, take care.